BMW CEO just went against EVs. He thinks EVs are killing the middle class, and the real reason behind this might shock you. The European Union has sanctioned a ban on all combustion cars after 2035, but BMW CEO thinks that this is a total disaster. He said, I don't think that would help the climate or anyone else. Banning combustion cars is an imminent risk. Do we need to hit the brakes on the EV race? Why is the German car maker opposing EVs? If you thought you knew everything about EVs, prepare to have your mind blown. Oliver Zips, who is the current CEO of BMW, just gave everyone a reality check about why EVs are not a solution for the future. While everyone wants you to buy EVs and go green, the increasing sticker price on EVs has left the common man unable to buy a car. EVs are not as green as they seem either, and a complete ban on combustion engines could be one of the worst decisions ever for mankind. During a recent exclusive gathering in Germany, Zip said something which took everyone by surprise. ICE vehicles constitute the largest margin of cars anywhere in the world. Before you simply shut something like that down within 8 or 10 years, you have to know well what you're doing. It would be harmful to simply give up a technology in which you have a global market position without need. The goal is to reduce emissions, not ban combustion engines. I don't think that would help the climate or anyone else. Is the world ready to retire the internal combustion engine or ICE prematurely? He thinks that a global ban would not just hurt his company, but all the major automakers globally. The relentless drive towards EVs has been championed by companies such as Tesla, which have seen exponential growth. Established automaker giants like Volkswagen are investing heavily in battery electric vehicles. Volkswagen's Wigau plant, once an ICE manufacturing behemoth, has now transformed into an EV production hub. Meanwhile, other stalwarts like Porsche and Audi are making strides with their electric vehicle program. But did you know that VW is now under a debt of nearly 192 billion dollars. They are losing to modern EV makers and haven't been fully on board with electrification either. But here's where things take a twist. BMW, while developing several electric vehicles, has reiterated its commitment to combustion engines. The company's vision stands out, firmly believing in a balanced approach. BMW's recent endeavors reveal this commitment. They're not merely focused on electric vehicles, but are also investing heavily in next-gen petrol and diesel engines, aiming to make them far more efficient than before. On top of this, BMW has introduced a revolutionary new fuel, but more on that in a couple of minutes. The other problem Zip stated comes in the form of being too dependent on countries like China. Currently, nearly 87% of lithium-ion battery imports come from China. During an insightful roundtable discussion in New York, Zips dropped another truth bomb. He cautioned all car makers against an electric-only strategy by saying, when we look at the technology coming out, the EV push, we must be careful because at the same time, you increase dependency on very few countries. Driving his point home, Zips underscored the fact that the majority of the raw materials required for battery production is predominantly controlled by China. This over-reliance brings with it significant geopolitical and supply chain risks. His remarks delved deeper into the broader implications of phasing out combustion engines prematurely. If someone cannot buy an EV for some reason but needs a car, would you rather propose he continues to drive his old car forever? If you are not selling combustion engines anymore, someone else will. Zips' sentiments are a testimony to his long-standing stance against outright bans on combustion engine vehicles. He has consistently championed the cause of such engines, especially in the wake of increasing regulatory pressures demanding automakers to minimize their carbon footprint. Furthermore, he urged companies to be prepared for an era where energy prices and raw materials remain high. So we might not see EVs getting cheaper anytime soon. I'll explain the reason behind this towards the end of this video. Zip said, we have a peak now. They might not stay at the peak, but they will not go back to former prices. If you continue to increase prices, you will eventually phase out the middle class from the base market, which is not fair. He believes that the ultimate decision of what people get to drive should rest within their hand, and companies should still focus on creating options instead of abandoning ICE cars altogether. Now, you might be thinking that the high cost is justified because EVs are greener, right? But do you know the dark reality behind that. Take, for example, the poster child of the EV movement, Tesla. Now, recognized as the world's most valuable automotive company, Tesla, like other EV manufacturers, relies heavily on the lithium-ion rechargeable battery, a seemingly innocuous piece of technology that hides a dirty secret. These batteries depend on minerals like cobalt, graphite, lithium, and manganese. To fully understand the environmental cost of EVs, one needs to follow the trail these minerals leave behind, a trail muddied by dangerous mining 
practices and human rights violations. A UN report unveils the alarming concentrations of these raw materials in countries plagued by lax environmental standards and dubious labor practices. Now, considering the scale, currently there are nearly 3 billion cars that need to be converted into EVs globally, and we simply do not have enough rare earth material for this process. But the concerns don't end with mineral sourcing. The carbon footprint of EVs challenges their green image. A substantial portions of the EV's lifetime carbon emissions, about half, arises from its production, especially battery manufacture. Compared to a gasoline-powered car, which accounts for 17% of its lifetime CO2 emissions during production, the EV starts its life with a significant carbon debt. On top of all this, EVs generally have a higher average financing cost at $4,500 in contrast to the $3,000 average for ICE vehicles. The same applies to insurance as well. That said, the areas where they truly shine is the long-term cost of fueling versus charging and maintenance due to less number of moving parts involved. However, the loss in value over five years is steeper in EVs, which depreciate by an average of $43,500 due to battery degradation. In comparison, ICE vehicles depreciate by $27,000 on average. So you see folks, the political leaders are not really telling you the full story. Now BMW hasn't always been pushed around. In fact, they even tried to oppose the EU to avoid the premature ban of ICE engine. Speaking on the rapidly changing market dynamics, Zips noted, the base car market segment will either vanish or will not be done by European manufacturers. China's ascendancy in the global electric transition is undeniable, with unparalleled access to the supply chain, far surpassing that of the UK or US. China has positioned itself as the preeminent force. An array of electric car manufacturers, including the likes of BYD, Tang, SAIC, and Airways are aggressively vying to establish their dominance in the market. The EU's roadmap to outlaw the sale of combustion engine vehicles by 2035 has been met with palpable anxiety from its automotive sector. The core concerns revolve around the lagging development of an EV charging infrastructure and the challenge of securing critical minerals essential for EV production. He further points out, there are countries where they are not developing anything at all, a staggering 280 83 battery plants are either operational or under development in China. In stark contrast, the US has 34 such facilities, while the UK has a mere two. Zips's tenure as BMW CEO since 2019 has been marked by a pragmatic approach. Despite the aggressive price wars in China, especially involving heavyweights like Tesla and BYD, Zips remains unworried about BMW's prospects. But he does sound an alarm on the EU's aggressive push to transition entirely to EVs. His concerns also touch upon the Commission's proposal, which is currently under discussion. If ratified, it would lead to a ban on new combustion engine vehicles, essentially mandating sales of battery-powered cars. Furthermore, recent geopolitical events, particularly Russia's invasion of Ukraine, have led to skyrocketing prices of these new materials. This surge, Zips warns, would directly translate to costlier EVs, which will not be accessible by the common man anymore. There is also a bright beam at the end of the tunnel in the form of their revolutionary new fuel, which might make electric vehicles obsolete and allow you to keep using your ICE cars for years to come. BMW's latest venture, the iX5 Hydrogen Development Project, marks the culmination of four years of intensive research. The company is ushering this fleet, albeit a limited one with fewer than 100 cars, onto the world stage. BMW CEO said, Hydrogen is the missing piece when it comes to emission-free mobility. He emphasized its efficiency in storing and transporting renewable energies and believes that a single technology will not suffice to achieve global climate neutral mobility. Built upon the current BMW X5 model, the iX5 Hydrogen was first teased as a concept at the IAA show in 2019. By 2021, it was ready for the public to experience its capabilities as a shuttle vehicle at the IAA Mobility event. Combining a rear axle drive unit with fifth generation BMW e-drive technology, the lithium-ion battery, and the hydrogen fuel cell. The iX5 Hydrogen unleashes a commendable output of 295 kilowatts or 401 horsepower on the road. BMW is eager to foster innovations in Europe to cultivate a hydrogen economy, championing large-scale hydrogen projects with Porsche and VW. Do you think Oliver Zips is right about his warning? Let me know in the comments below!